Hey guys, so it's a one topic video um, about Danielle Conn. I haven't filmed a video on her in a while because I feel like she kind of stayed out of everything. Like it was, it was fine, not fine, but it was like a little bit better, I guess, because she used to be in so much drama. And obviously there's like the controversy with her age and all of that stuff that we've been over for a while now. Like I feel like I've been covering it since the start of my channel. So she's supposed to be turning 18 now. But apparently she's 16 so that kind of adds up that lines up with what we used to say which was that she was 14 at the time dating like a 17 year old anyway we're gonna get into all of that because she's just been exposed by her ex-manager um and it's been like a back and forth in videos and i'm gonna just summarize that for you guys because i think there was some interesting stuff on both sides um before we do that my social media will be in the description along with my second channel where i do movie commentaries and get ready with me's and anything else subscribe to that bell like comment for engagement all of that good stuff so let's just get into it we have michael so i used to say his name as michael weist apparently it's michael weist and he said that himself so i'm just gonna stick with what he said about his own surname so he is obviously the guy behind tanacon not much of a good reputation there but like even a broken clock is right twice a day so like um, there must be some truth to what he's saying because there is some stuff that like kind of lines up anyway he was kind of like managing her on and off for a while so he filmed the first video about his client danielle con and that was after she made some comments on instagram live saying that he forged her signature to take money away from her from her youtube channel now if you guys don't know how that works if you have an mcn which is like a, a management they'll take over your youtube channel and they'll be added on as like like co-ownership kind of they're not actually owning your channel, they can just control some things on your channel. And you can enable that and disable that just by kind of signing in and, and enabling someone to be like co-operating your channel. He says that it's not like you take money from them, it's just um, so they can like figure out copyright claims and brand deals and that kind of stuff. But all the money that she makes goes to her, no one has access to that. So he said that was a lie, which I kind of believe. He says that there are 30 plus CPS cases against Danielle Conn's mum, that she forces her to post inappropriate pictures. Like multiple occasions she'll be like, wear this bikini and post this. And that's been going on for, you know, as long as she's got inappropriate pictures on her Instagram, I'm assuming. He posts some clips of like her basically saying like, you should get this piercing done and you should get this piercing done. And as much as like those things individually aren't that sinister, I feel like if you add it together into the character that is Jen, Danielle Conn's mum, you know. Uh, relationships with adults, we had Mikey Tua, we had another guy and then we had Mason who is the most recent guy who is over the age of 18. Apparently uh, her mum wastes a lot of her money. So basically what happened was he bought her on when he thought that she was almost turning 18 or that she was like 17. At the time she was 15, now she's 16 and he thought that she was turning 18. So he was like, oh my God, you, you've made all this money, but it just seems like all the money's been wasted by your mom. Like her mom's buying cars for herself and for her family members and spending you know outrageous amounts on rent in houses they don't really need. Um, so he was just concerned that she was going to turn 18 have access to her bank account because she obviously doesn't have access to that right now she's not 18 um, and be left with nothing you know he's like it's good to if you're doing such a volatile career that could end very quickly it's good to have some money invested in some money kind of like secured for a retirement you know because this doesn't last forever and he's like i was scared that she's going to be left with nothing turns out she's not 18 she's 16 which still her money's still being wasted but you know that's how he kind of found out that she wasn't 18 is because she came to him and was like i'm not 18 by the way like if you want to sign me on I'm not 18 i'm not almost 18 can you go talk to my mom because she has access to all of my emails all of my accounts all of my brand deals everything so her mom's apparently in control of everything nothing comes through to danielle he debates her sexuality which is kind of where he lost me he was like you know she came out as pansexual he thinks that she's doing it for likes i never like to speculate on that because that's just none of my business says that she's biphobic and transphobic and that she hates drag queens all of that he had like zero proof for other than in the second video that he filmed he called up someone and said didn't she say this? And they were like, yes. Um, but once again, not something that we have proof for. And I feel like that's just like a, a huge um, drag of her character that I'm without proof. I'm just not here for it. Then we had the situation with Mason, who she's kind of seeing on and off, buying Michael earrings from Cartier. And they're obviously very expensive. And apparently someone filmed a TikTok um, insinuating that there is a romantic relationship brewing between um, Mason and Michael um, that Danielle was really pissed off about. And apparently Danielle was the one that kind of encouraged the person to post that TikTok uh, that caused Michael to um, get some sticky situations. You know, it's, it was awkward. Now, apparently that wasn't a romantic gift. It was a gift as a way of kind of thanking Michael for doing things for them. Apparently Michael got Mason out of some legal trouble, paid for legal fees, paid for dinners, Ubers, that kind of a thing, where it all kind of added up to the price of the Cartier earrings. So that was kind of the, the 
the gist of the gift. And then he addresses the forging signature lie. Basically says like, there's no way to do it. You have access to a YouTube channel and you can, you're like the only person that can allow someone into your channel. Um, also, she said that it was because he faked her IP address and with the recent Creepshow art drama, we know, and I spoke to IT people, you can't do that for too long. And then Danielle responds and apparently uh, when Danny and Mason first started seeing each other, he was like very into it. And she claims that he hired on an assistant that he was really attracted to, but the assistant was straight. And when he finally like confessed his feelings to the assistant, the assistant apparently left he like quit the job and then he started like really hating on Danny and Mason and turning them against each other because apparently then he started liking Mason which kind of links to the earring story so that's the story that she's sticking with that apparently he was turning uh Danny against her mom that she never asked him to be a manager because she has a manager already um but then later on in the video that she says her mom told her that they should look for a manager so that's kind of a you know Michael in his first video mentioned uh some crimes relating to you know Someone over the age of 18, dating someone below the age of 18. You guys know what I'm saying. I don't need to say it because YouTube hates that. We know that. Um, she kind of brings that up, but she never really addresses her age. Like she doesn't address the elephant in the room, which is the fact that she's 16, a minor. And they live in California, which is, you know, the age of consent's 18. So you can't even, like in the UK, the age of consent is 16. She would have just been kind of like in the age of consent now. Um, California, not the same thing. They don't mention that elephant in the room, but she just says that there is no way that Mason could be in any legal trouble and then she ends it off on that note, which is not the best note to leave it on. And, that, and then she mentions how uh, Michael is apparently really disrespectful in her house. And the rest of the video is just kind of like the same stuff over and over again. And then we get Michael's last video, which is end of Danielle Kahn's lies. She basically said that in her video that her mom doesn't force her to post anything. Anything that she posts, she posts because she wants to. And he basically said that that's because her mom allowed her to post these pictures and videos from a really young age. So to her, those are now really normal. There's like normal things to do. So of course she now posts those willingly, but her mom shouldn't really be allowing her to post that. So she's essentially encouraging Danny to do things like this and herself by simply not saying like, no, you can't do this. Do you know what I mean? Like I kind of get his point. Says how she didn't really address the age thing, which she didn't. Mentions the piercings and the tattoos, you know, once again, she's below the age of 18. No good parlor should be doing this for you below the age of 18. Apparently Dylan, uh, the assistant, that was working for my Michael, left because of um, seeing some things happen between Danny and people over the age of 18 um, in the sense, and he just felt uncomfortable working in such a close environment to her and kind of like, I guess, contributing to that. Um, so he left because of that. So that's what Michael's saying. Michael's saying, no, he didn't leave because I flirted with him. He left because he was uncomfortable by you guys. And Michael said that he's seen some things between Danny and people and, and I'm assuming Mason, uh, that he felt really uncomfortable by and he didn't want to be subjected to either. He mentions the hacking, forging signature, etc. He says it's not true once again. Um, she's still sticking to the story that it is. He's saying you literally have access to all of your funds. I don't know why you think I'm scamming you. Then he also mentions the discrepancy between Danielle Kahn saying, I already had a manager for a long time. I wouldn't have signed Michael on. I don't know why he's saying I'm his client. Then later on in the video saying, my mom told me we need to get a manager. So like if you already had a manager, why would you need to get a new manager? So he's kind of pulling up that lie so in obviously the first one he says something about if mason was bisexual danny wouldn't be with him because she doesn't like bisexual people danny then in her video says why would you try to expose his sexuality he's straight but like why would you even try to like make that assumption he said i didn't make an assumption i said if he was bisexual you wouldn't accept that because you're very biphobic that was like the general vibe once again her word against his i can't really Go too deep into that one. Then he shows some videos from inside the house where it's just really dirty. Like there's like dogs just pissing and pooing everywhere, just doing their thing. There's like clothes laying around everywhere. Like it's just, you know, it's not great. And he shows some messages actually, which she didn't show any messages or any proof. He shows some messages from other people. Like Danny accused Michael of assaulting someone. And that person then apparently responded under Danielle Kahn's video and said, like commented themselves from their own account saying, no, that's not true. Uh, so he has some messages to pull up, which is nice. Um, he pulls up some Uber and um, restaurant kind of receipts that she owes him money for, the legal fees. Like he's got quite a bit more receipts going on, which once again, like he's not a great guy and he's clearly a little bit of a scam artist, allegedly, don't sue me. Um, like obviously with Tanacon and everything, he's known as being a scam artist but a broken clock is right twice a day. 
this is the twice a day, I guess, a little bit. Like, do I think he should be doing this kind of this publicly? No, I think if he genuinely thinks that Daniel Conn is in a dangerous and uncomfortable situation, he should be bringing that up with maybe CPS or the police, not in a YouTube video, but she is technically defaming him and this is affecting his career. So I do understand that point of things as well. Anyway, she he basically ends it on the note that she owes him money for many different things and that she's wishing cancelling on him. She said in her video that, you know, he should be cancelled. He's saying, you've been cancelled many times before. I have no reason to be cancelled. I'm literally just telling the truth. You've been defaming me to my clients privately and publicly and no one's going to want to work with me, even though this is literally all your fault. So that is kind of like the whole story of Danielle Khan and the manager. I hate the fact that he kind of brought in her sexuality into this. I don't think there's any point in that. Like, there's no reason for it but the sexualization of her the age thing her boyfriends like things he has seen behind the scenes that is all just very valid and it once again just confirms the stuff that we've been saying for like two to three years now there's just something kind of really sinister going on behind the scenes um but that is where i'm going to leave today's video if you guys enjoyed it give it a thumbs up comment down below anything you want to comment down below and subscribe to post videos every time something happens so hit that bell if you're notified when that's happening social media links in the links in the description i'll see you in my next one bye guys